got beat 1-0. Who scored? Carl Vitt. a little bit of space here, Carl Vitt. The cross comes in, and it is in. I remember that because it keeps getting replayed. <laughs> so I think we would have played a 4-4-2. So we'll start at the back. Ned Zilic. Correct. Uh, Jade North. Correct. Matteo Corbo. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, hang on, hang on. Alan Picken. Correct. Richard Johnson. Correct. Nick Carl. Correct. Matt Thompson. Correct. Ante Milicic. Correct. Steve Eagleton. He came on. Yeah, he came on. Mark Bridge came on. No. He's Bridge started. Okay, then Mark Bridge. Stuart Mushalik. Came off the bench. Oh, okay. <laughs> Half a point. <laughs> Craig Deans. Yes. That's right. Got injured after five games, and that was him. So you're now missing one start for one start. Oh, Andy Pedersen, goalkeeper. No. But well, he's a sub. No sub goalkeeper that game. <laughs> Done well. Paul Cole. Oh, Coles. Oh. Did he start, did he? He started. He wore number 12. There you go. That's I remember that. Ah, oh, Bruno. It's Fauna rolling against Liam Reddy. And Reddy stands strong. Save two from him. That's I remind him every month. The game that's had everything. Bonneroll, he saved it again! I do not believe this! Barisha. Barisha, and he saved it again, Liam Reddy! Well, he's turning into the penalty saving specialist. Uh, Vidasic, boy from Wellington, Rocky. Okay. I think uh, the first six years was pretty ordinary because we had Reebok and everything was the same. So that was a tough six years. But post Reebok era, I would probably say the palm tree at Central Coast Mariners. That was horrendous. And if you're asking me for my best, uh, I liked the pink one I played in last year at Perth Glory. Yeah, I'm upset. Uh, then I have the kids, my youngest one especially, he gets upset with me because if we lose, it means he can't go on the field or in the change room. So I've got to cop it off him because we lost, um, which compounds it. Um, yeah, I'm not the best. Yeah, it'd be good. It'd be great to get it this year because it means that we've uh, kept four clean sheets in the remaining games. But um, yeah, it's something probably to look back at post-football career and say I've had so many clean sheets and. Um, but yeah, they're like, I suppose, like, they're like goals for a striker. He wants to score as many as possible. And, um, you know, as a goalkeeper, I love having clean sheets. And the defenders in front are obviously, they, they love getting clean sheets. And uh, the boss loves clean sheets, which is, which is also especially good because it helps us get clean sheets. But it's something that, yeah, we really pride ourselves on as goalkeepers. Probably Vuka. But then, you know, obviously in short term, you, you, we had Matt Ryan, obviously he's gone on and obviously killing it now, but he only played uh, a, a shorter time. But, you know, you can't go past Fuka, Eugene and, and, and Theokotos. I think um, those three obviously stand out for their longevity and the performance uh, over the years. So if someone wants to buy a 38-year-old goalkeeper, okay. And for how much? Okay. I'd, be, I'd like to get six figures, 100,000. Let's go. We've massively undersold you. Oh, have I? Yeah. They've gone for 200,000 euros. Oh, I'll take that. The yeah. Oof. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I think very important. I think um, I've changed clubs, changed cities a lot too, so the uh, family's always moved with me um, and really. Uh, settled in every time we've gone to new places. Um, obviously it's harder on my older two kids because of school, but they've been uh, a major, major, major um, contributor and factor of why I'm still playing now, so. Um, well done, Dad! Yeah, without uh, their support, I don't think I'd be here 
now, this year, um, especially in, in, in previous years because um, they're the ones that still drive me to come in every day, positive and, and for me I still think I've got the best job in the world because you know it's something that um, you come in, uh, train and play on the weekend in front of you know fans, it's uh, for me it's the best, best thing and it's something that I want to continue to do for, for a number of years still. Yeah, it does, yeah. Um, you know, I think we've settled in really well uh, out, of the, out of the football club in terms of off the park. Uh, the kids are happy at school. Um, we really love living in Perth, uh, love the culture and, and what Perth is, you know, the, the sun, the beaches and, and the laid back lifestyle. So it really suits us as a family. Um, and it's something that we um, probably when we came here, we probably wouldn't see ourselves being here this long, but also now even contemplating staying here post football. So it's something that, um, you know, we really love the city and love the people and yeah, it's a, it's a good place. I always enjoy playing against Perth because the shed would always give the goalkeeper a stick and call him a fat bastard and you know, all your shit and it was, uh, it's, it was a really good crowd to play in front of uh, even when you're a, a opposing goalkeeper because they used to give you stick and I don't mind uh, a bit of that so it was, uh, it was good to come over here and then obviously um, listen to them give it to another keeper but also give you positive uh, positive uh, feedback, songs, you know, I think uh, the crowd have been tremendous uh, since my time here and uh, hopefully they can continue. Oh, I get it everywhere really, probably, um, no I do, um, you know what, it's Sydney, um, yeah probably Sydney, Brisbane a little bit, previous clubs but probably the most annoying is not annoying, I would just say funnier is Central Coast because there's not many of them and when they do give you stick it's like that three, two or three voices you hear where at least with Brisbane and Sydney it's you know a couple of thousand so it's a, it's a bit better. Yeah well that was, a, that was a tactic in the game that we obviously got, yeah we got, got booked early for that too actually but. And Liam Reddy has been in no particular hurry. Jonathan Pereira is not enough. He's waited long enough. That's all about game management and that, but you've obviously sometimes got to take the brunt for doing that. But that's part of a goalkeeper's job. If I see the boys are tired in front, then you know maybe take a little bit longer with goal kicks and help them out. I mean, um, prime example on Sunday, you know, I think uh, 30 to 30 something degrees and three o'clock, so I think the boys needed a bit of a breather sometimes. But is what it is. I think you, you now it's a lot more your training where it used to just be, well, I can only talk from my experience, but you would just train for you and what you're going to do. And now, especially with Milo, they're looking at, okay, we're playing this opponent this week and this is what my, this is what they're good at and these are the areas that they'll get in. So we train with an object of what we're going to see on the weekend. So it's evolved that way. Uh, we do video sessions now uh, on, on our games that we've played or on strikers that we're, we're coming up against to see what they're good at, what, what, what their likes are. So it's evolved in on that side of things a lot more. Um, in terms of the technique and that stuff, it's still um, basically the same. It's just that it's just got a lot more professional in the way that we now approach games. It's not just your training and we just keep doing the same stuff. Now it's like, okay, we're coming up against this striker. He likes to do this certain thing. So we might train that week and to try to stop that, you know. I recall we finished the NSL and then we had a big break and everyone went back and played in their state league competitions or went and played in Asia. And we ended up, uh, I think we came in the January uh, of 05, was it? 06, 05, 06? We came in the January and we had a really like a nine month pre-season, so it was an eight month, eight, nine month pre-season, so it was a long pre-season, so it was a lot of build up around the first season, and then obviously we were lucky enough to get the first game at home, which was, um, you know, it was good for the city and good for Newcastle, and it was, you know, fantastic to be a part of. Um, I remember the game, you know, we got there and it was, I think it was like sold out nearly, so it was a really good buzz around the feeling, and 
you know, around the, the league and everything new, and obviously uh, deflated because we got beat one 0 But um, yeah, it was a it was a good time and um, it was something to obviously look back and be proud that I was a, a part of the first game. Uh, probably the uh, time at, at Wellington, uh, we beat. Perth actually in the penalty shootout and then we played the following week against Newcastle in front of a, a sold out uh, Westpac Stadium which was a really good time to be over there. I think uh, New Zealand had just qualified for the World Cup so it was a really big buzz around the city so you know that was a really, um, I look back at that time really fondly and then obviously last year um, I think the, for me like just the, the Newcastle Jets game we won 1-0. Jed Ams looks at his watch and that'll do it. Got a clean sheet. Uh, Ivan popped up and scored a great goal, and you know we uh, won the won the Premier's plate. So that was uh, another game that I'll always remember because we won silverware, and, and obviously the um, the Adelaide game at home and the penalty shootout, which is uh, another one that sticks in the memory. Can convert, but he can't. Ready. Do you want a save by Ready? No, Ready again. Constant duplicity. I was calm, like, um, yeah, I was calm. I think um, it probably helped me that I had just saved one so I could, you know, but I just took some deep breaths and knew what I was going to do. And can he score here? Boom, he can! Lucky I uh, struck the ball nice and well, and yeah, it was good. He got very gangly, uh, but Dina doesn't know the real story. So the reason I gave him the gloves was because he was actually the worst player for us on the field. And, and uh, normally when you go off, it's who do you give the gloves to? Well, who's playing the worst? And I had a quick look around, spoke to a couple of senior players, and we all agreed that Dino was our worst player. So he was best in goals. So he did well. I mean, uh, I think uh, he faced one shot. And what he kick a ball out with his hands over halfway. So, I mean, well done, Dino. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think Craig Moore for me. Um, when he came back to Brisbane, um, yeah, he was just a really, really smart but real good defender. He um, he didn't let anything through, and the, I always had. Uh, if you ever make a save and the boy has a shot from you know 15, 20 yards out, I'd always see his Nike Tiempo's in front of me. He was always the first person to come. So if I ever spilled a ball, I always knew that he was going to be there, and that was something that I always uh, remember, uh, just how how, he, how good he was at that in terms of covering for players and, and always doing the, the little things. And for me, he was the best defender that I uh, played with. Um, you know, but there's been uh, numerous others, but he's one that stands out. Oh, I don't know about nervous. I think um, there's been some good strikers. I think, you know, you obviously you can't go past you know, Archie Thompson, uh, Shane Smeltz, Barisha, you know, those, those sorts of players. I think even Bruno, uh, when he was at Melbourne City, you know, th th those players are dangerous. Bobo, when he was here. So there's been um, some really good strikers in, in the league, but I wouldn't say nervous. I'd say um, excited because you want to play against the best. Um, but yeah, there's been a, a few, and um, we've obviously uh, I've come up against a lot. But you know, those probably ones are the ones that stand out. Uh, I lived in the UK, moved to the UK when I was younger, and just got into soccer. And then um, I was actually a field player, but uh, didn't really appreciate the sort of running you have to do. And being a rugby league, from a rugby league background, uh, goalkeeper was sort of the best thing to go. It still could get rough a little bit and dive around and yeah, just took to it and yeah, haven't looked back. No, 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 no. He, um, he's actually a big Arsenal fan, so I'm actually, I'm actually named after Liam Brady. So he, uh, he loves his football. Uh, and never pressured, uh, never pressured me into playing rugby league. He enjoyed, enjoyed the, the fact that I played soccer. So or football, so um, no, he was always a uh, very supportive. Uh, he's definitely up in the top three. Um, look, we don't want to go too far and give him number one yet, but he's, he's definitely there. Yeah, he's there or thereabouts. Yeah.